game. I think Alliance might actually even be setting up for it, because Pugna and Clockwork have so great synergy. Clockwork initiates and starts the fight, and forces the enemy team to react, and if they react, they react into another ward. And then you have Dragonite in the front lines as well, pushing towers and dealing damage and burning shit, so it's really great. I, I think Alliance could totally pick that. We're gonna see if Liquid lets them. They, so far they do, they get two supports and Crystal Maiden Alliance's and Dazzle here. turn to pick. Really interesting opener here for Liquid. There's the oh Dragonite. Boy. Oh, oh boy. boy. You Team are a genius, Sindoren. Genius, I say. If it's I'm a, a genius, push. then Loda is a genius too. I can live with that. Yeah. I'm down okay. with that. This is... Oh boy, uh, what did Alliance just get here? I think they got such an amazing yeah. death. Now, Liquid... I, I what have they... to mention, before you go into this, I have to mention Skywrath Mage yeah. as a potential pickup for Alliance because the damage going on to a Decrepify, not to mention Ten the easy setup remaining. for her, the ult, on top Team of COGS. Liquid's Just throwing it out there. Pick. And Wraith King is also available for Team Liquid, but because they've been picking him left, left, left right, and center, but I don't think they're going to pick him now with that lineup. I think you're right. I think Alliance will get Skyrath as one of the supports. It's one of EGM's beloved supports, and it's perfect here. There's so good setup, like you say. Has okay synergy with the way they want to play the game. Five Dude, we're on fire remaining. right now. Sand King I know. is going to be the last one for Alliance. To pick. And Sand King was the, even though he, in this pool, is very, probably a pretty good overall, I would say it's an easy last pick for Alliance. Because if you pick a Pugna, you 100% guarantee that the other team will not pick up a Sand King. Because it is one, it completely counters Epi Blink. 100%, not even close. Uh, but Puck's going to be the last pick for Team Liquid. So, I, I really like watch towers go down. But, I mean, Team Liquid has... A very survivable lineup with Dazzle, Razor, usually picks up very tanky items, Puck very elusive in nature. Shot of being very squishy though. Know, so This is this is just gonna be one of those games that we love to watch where no team is really banking on going super late game. I guess Liquid could, but at the same time time they Ten seconds they have Shadow Fiend and Razor, which I would say wins the late game against Alliance's matchup, especially when you have Five a Puck who's also a great remaining. gamer for the for the initiation and setup, but both peak at around the 20 to 30 minute mark when they get really strong. This is going to be a game completely decided by ridiculous team fights, and I just hope we get to see some big plays from Prepare both teams here, because the potential is definitely there from the drafts, and let's have a look at how they're going to lane in from the get-go, at least for Alliance. It's actually going to be Ake playing as the Skyrath Mage because they put the Sand King on EGM, who usually plays that one. Loda will be playing as the Pugna, We've got S4 on the Dragon Knight, and no surprise, we've got Bulldog on the Clockwork. So very it's straightforward Bulldog, from the lines. By Bulldog. the way, <laughs> okay, just, just making sure. Bull Koifka, going to be Bong. the mid Shadow Fiend. And then at top lane, looks like it's going to be Way 2 playing the Crystal Maiden. Razor played by TC, no surprise there. And Fluff on the Dazzle with the last one being Bulba on the Puck at bottom lane. What do you think about these lane setups with, let's see, it's Razor, Crystal Maiden. Is that the IX mic? No, okay. I thought that was the Ike's mic set. I don't think it is. <laughs> no, yeah. so. no, it's not. This is the. I think it's the Snowdrop, isn't it? Snowdrop, Snowdrop yeah, Mantle. Okay. I think I have that one myself. Yeah. Okay. But Liquid's lanes. Uh, I think they make sense from the perspective that they're probably expecting. Well, what should they expect actually? I, I think it's fairly obvious that S4 is mid on that Dragon Knight, so they're going will willingly into a Skyrath Mage Pugna Sand King trial lane, which I think is actually a really strong lane. Uh, I'm not sure this is a, an easy win for Liquid in that lane, although they do have... They have Razor against... Well, who can he drain? He can drain the Sand King reliably, not really the other heroes in the lane, and... Dazzle, as an aggressive support, not really the best. He's more of a defensive support, so I don't, I don't really know about this from Liquid. I, I'm not sure if this is going to work out the way they hope, but at least they're triple range. Yeah, well, the push is there overall for Alliance with Pugna. I mean, Pugna outpushes pretty much any hero. Once he picks up the arcane boots, at least. But again, a lot of survivability with Dazzle, and of course Crystal Maiden, one of the top supports, thanks to the early nukes coming out from her and giving mana to the rest of the team, which is always nice, although Razor doesn't really care too much about that. Um, I think it's an overall pretty even lane, and of course, as I say that, it's probably going to be completely favored in one side, but again, these are like weird tri-lanes that are not seen very often. I mean, Razor tri-lane is not something we see very often. I mean, typically... I was actually expecting him, well not expecting him, but it could have been a good mid against a Dragon Knight. Yeah, has to rely completely really on Dragon Breath. But so is Shadow Fiend. He's also a, a good laner against Dragon Knight. That's a good thing for Liquid here as far as that goes. They're going to win the mid lane if they don't make a mistake or get ganked horribly. Uh, SF is one of the heroes that beats Dragon Knight, no so his Razor, so they had two options. 
And as far as the bottom lane goes, they're going to put Bulba as Puck against actually a dual lane so far. Ake is going to start down here, which to me is a little bit weird, but might be worth it in the end if they can completely lock down Bulba and maybe have the threat of Aki rotating towards the mid to put some pressure on the Shadow Fiend, then perhaps it's worth sac sacrificing a bit of farm on Loda for that, as EGM is going to try to pull himself a little bit of experience. Well, Puck's going to have some trouble against Ake in general. I mean, he can elude a lot of the like the Arcane Bolt and the Concussive Shot, but once Ancient Seal is leveled, goodbye every spell from Puck, and that is a huge counter to him as Loda. He's going to take some neutrals, but looks like Liquid's going to get the better of that overall. Mid Aki actually lane. putting a lot of pressure here. Well, he's still <laughs> it's still a 1v1 going on. <laughs> I switched over like 10 minutes ago. Okay. Well, top lane. Looks like Loda's going to be dove on. Are we going to have any TPs? Probably a little bit too early. There you see Static... What is that called? Static Link? Oh, wow, so close. Loda, though, completely drained. We'll have to completely rely on his nuke, and that's not going to be the case. Nothing's going to happen. As he goes down immediately. EGM, nice block, though. Is this going to force TC to die? Loda immediately TP. Oh, but he finds Dark an avenue light. somehow through the trees. And of course, Dazzle is going to continue to keep him alive thanks to that shadow wave. So, Liquid getting first blood, surprisingly. If Ake had a TP there, I think Loda's juking there could have turned that into a really big play for Alliance. But Ake not ready with, uh, with a TP scroll just yet. And it's the first blood going the way of Liquid in a lane where I, I guess. So you have to say when they're playing three against two like this, they have to make it count. They have to get this kill. So good job by them securing that. And at the same time, Bul uh, Bulba in the bottom lane is actually getting a lot. Ake has been putting some pressure on him. As far as farm goes, he's only got two CS, but he's still level three. Doing a good job disjoining a lot of the harassment here with the uh, with the face shift. So I would say so far so good for Team Liquid. Load of force out of lane, only level two thanks to that early death and. With a 2v3, it's going to be a lot. Of, I mean, we were assuming it was going to be a tri lane versus tri lane, and I think it was maybe a wash overall, but I think you're right. If Skywrath Mage had TP'd in, it would have been probably a different story, but as a result, Liquid's going to be taking the advantage in that tri v2. And Puck isn't really being punished. I mean, he's staying out of lane a bit. He's still getting the experience, though, overall, so I think he'd be happy with that, at least for the short term. S4 going to be bottling this double damage rune, thanks to... I'm actually surprised that he was able to push faster than, than Shadow Fiend. He's not going to really miss many creeps here. And it's because of the time in the game. Shadow Fiend isn't the greatest pusher in lane until he hits level 5 and level 7, at which point it just he's just one of the best. He's really quick. DD's going to be used here by S4. He's putting a lot of pressure on Koikva. One more hit and a Flame Breath could do it here. Needs one more attack, eats the tree. Oh, oh got what it. a play from S4 right Very here. Very nicely Beautiful. done. Beautiful. I was about to say, he's doing a really good job staying on par Dyer's and farm with Koikva. Now he even kills him here attack. in the lane, so... Seizes the opportunity there. Very, very well played by S4. And it looks like Bubble was completely forced out of lane. So he has to go all the way back to base. Koifka did pick up his bottle finally. He was trying to... bury it via the courier. But it was that, that was probably the slowest courier I've ever seen. Although if you have two bottles, I think it stacks too. So maybe that's not the slowest courier we've ever seen. Loda, what did he pick up? He got his boots. He got boots? He got his boots. Okay, so not going too well in that lane. For Loda whatsoever. But, but despite the death from Shadow say... Fiend, he's still getting last hits, so he's gonna be fine. Loda now contesting a little bit here. He has the Nether Ward placed, so <clears throat> Liquid a little bit hesitant to, to cast spells here. I still think now the way the game has developed for a bit, I think Alliance's investment is actually paying off. Bulb is actually in a lot of trouble here. Aki's almost gonna get him. 17 HP left on Bulba there as he salves up, but Oh, oh, they're going on Loda. Oh, there's going to be two fights at once. We're going to focus on top as Loda. Almost going to go down. Yes, he does. Actually, we're going to be watching mid. S4. Pretty sure he's going to be able to get this kill. No, he actually Dyer's forced completely out by Shadow Fiend. Sand King did end up getting the kill on Razor, so... I... They made the poor choice in camera work, apparently, but... I really thought S4 was going to be able to get that kill thanks to his Dragon Form and Haste. But that wasn't the case. As Loda is forced to deep back again. Poor Loda, man. I mean, Pugna is one of those series, you, it, uh, you really need levels, you really need farm, at least in the early stages of the game, he's getting nothing. I mean, he has 13 last hits compared to the uh, the Razor with 17. It's, I guess it's semi-even, but he's just dying left and right. I still think the right comparison right now is to compare Loda to Bulba, because they're kind of in a similar position where they're on, a, on the easy lane, but in an unfavorable matchup in terms of numbers. Aki has now left the bottom lane knowing that Bulldog can easily take care of this in his own. He's almost level 6 against a level 3 puck now. 
because of Ake. And that's what I wanted to say. In the start, it didn't seem like a good investment for Alliance, but since the, the trade they got top with one for one kill, the fact that S4 killed mid alone, I feel like Alliance is getting a lot more out of this early game right now. Even though they're behind on gold, they're ahead by about a thousand experience. And a lot of that is going on to Sand King, who is just... In my book, top three supports you love to get early levels on. He is amazing at putting that to use with the Burrow Strike. And Aki being only level two, and they're still ahead by 1k experience, really tells the story of the game right now. Oh, Loda might get sandwiched in. Fluff has level two in Poison Touch, but he's going to make it to his tower, it looks like. But yeah, EGM, I'm sure once he hits the level five, picking me that level three Burrow Strike, things will change as far as ganking potential is concerned. Koyka Radiance middle tower is under attack. bottles up Invis Rune. He's going to continue to jungle with that sandstorm. And this is something. Was it yeah. him in game one of the first series that we saw doing just that? Is Loda? Yeah, exactly. Oh boy, he's in a lot of trouble. I Doesn't have enough to decrepify. Known. Wouldn't have saved him anyway. <laughs> boy, oh boy. That is a disastrous lane for Pugna. I still think overall, in the grander scheme of things for Alliance, if Loda just. He doesn't need incredible items in this game. He needs level 4 Nether Ward. Oh, Aki's Fun in lane. trouble. He's oh, gonna get frostbitten. frostbitten. Oh, it's a little bit of an ambitious TP there. Gonna get killed off here. And Liquid finding a couple of good kills here, but... Speaking of Loda, I don't think he needs more than just some good levels right now. Level 4 Nether Ward, level 4 Nether Blast, and maybe a mech. Should cut it for, for Alliance's strategy in the, in the early Radiant mid game when it's supposed to be. He doesn't have to get incredible farm. But Liquid doing some good job here in the, on the support rotations. Bulldog. Oh, he Radiant's went to go for that so bad with the Invis attack. rune there. Keeping Koik for safe for now. Yeah, Koika, Invis with Way 2's support. And this tower's gonna go down one way or another, and it looks like Alliance Radiant's will get the last. I mean, you can't really fallen. deny against a Pugna Blast, Nether Blast anyway. No. And I guess he's kind of resigned to doing this, just roaming and pushing down the towers, because he's not... I mean, he's getting some levels, but he's still dying a lot in that top lane. That's really just a death trap. I don't oh, think S4 really almost getting the courier here. It's one more hit, it's not gonna get it. But that was Loda making a comeback Dyer's right there. Good rotation from him, attack. deciding not to go top again, but Dyer's going mid, securing the fortified. tower, getting the last hit, and now he's suddenly on about a thousand gold after having that terrible start. His boots, thousand gold. Would be okay with that if I were him right now, considering the the situation he's yep. been put in in this game. Dazzle! That is very true. TC trying to apply some pressure to this top tower. Dragon form complete for S4. Looks like Clockwork picked up. A double damage, but he's nowhere close to... Well, I guess he could get mid, but probably not going to do so. Just looking forward to seeing some ganky potential from him, from Sand King, who is level 6 now, actually. Puck. Oh, bottom Dream lane, Dream Call's going to go Aki's off. He's actually going to run right through it. Is it going to be enough? Waning Rift. Wow, look at him. He's actually staying around a little long, Shadow. I was... the, what is that called? Poison Touch. Surprisingly, Understood. enough damage. <laughs> and Graves going to keep Puff alive. Oh my god, used... oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay. He was starting to run away from the tower for some reason. Dyer's bottom tower <laughs> that would have been is really bad. Attack. As Alliance is just doing oh, what they were built to do, they're going to be pushing down this tier attack. 1 top. Yes. And now this time I think Liquid won't let them do it. Okay, really aggressive play here from EGM, but there comes the hook shot. Into the cogs. That is a double cogs. EGM not able to get off his ulti in time, and a double kill for TZ. Mostly because of the Crystal Maiden ult, dealing tons yeah. and tons of damage. That freeze and they don't even get the tier 1 the out of this. was incredible. I think... I think Bulldog got really unlucky there. I think he didn't get a single battery assault proc on the Crystal Maiden who was channeling there inside the cogs, but there were a couple of other targets, so it's possible, of course, that to just get unlucky a few times in a row and then the Freezing Field has already done its job. And Liquid, suddenly up 7-2, to two, getting a lot of good kills, and now they're just Daya's snowballing on farm. Koikva in the middle lane on Shadowfiend has gone for Hand of Midas and has 70 CS at 10 minutes because of the laning. So all of this... Uh, Dyer's top I was about to say, like, <laughs> two minutes ago, I was like, this game is shaping up to what I was hoping it would be. It's going to be really even down to these team fights. And then Liquid just found four or five good kills, and it's got a lot of gold on the back of it. And this is shaping up to be a really one-sided affair now, unless Alliance get one good team fight very soon. Yeah, well, I mean, they still have the potential to push down towers and gain some gold advantage that way, but you're right. It is def definitely favoring Liquid at this point, continuing to trend in their favor. Bulldong... <laughs> I hope he actually changes his name to that, because that is amazing. Gonna get a little bit of harassment from Bulba, putting out the zoning cogs, and that will break that up, it looks like. But S4, going for the Invis rune. Maybe this will set up a potential kill at bottom lane, with the help of Dyer's Ake, top tower who does not have under his ulti. I really want to see that coupled with the Clockwork ult. Of course, it does, it's kind of like 
Sunstrike and the fact that it shares damage, so you kind of only want one person in the cogs as far as efficiency Dyer's is concerned, top but tower has I guess it depends denied. on how much damage you're going to be dealing out overall. Yep. Going to be... This is going to be all down to the teamfight execution, and I think the pressure is on Alliance. They picked a lineup that needs to start pushing oh, yeah. towers right now, and not because Liquid has absolutely absurdly strong late game, but if you look at their heroes and their composition, if they get into a start like this with a Hand of Midas mid Shadow Fiend, who gets this amount Oh, of bottom lane, nice sentry. S4 is going to get caught out, waning rift, but there comes the stun from him. Along with the double Burrow Strike, EGM, what a dream Burrow Strike. Not able to get way too, though. Two for nothing exchange in the favor of Alliance. That's exactly what they need. Hookstrike on the follow by Admiral Bulldog. And there we see the combination I've been waiting for as Razor has resigned his death. That is a three for nothing exchange in favor of Alliance. That's exactly what they need. They need to probably push down a tower in the meantime. Where's Pugna at this point? He's going to be getting this tier one, hopefully. Great fight from Alliance. Where's Pugna? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, I swear. Top tower uh, is under attack. Coincidence? Well... That was um that was so big for Alliance. Just as Liquid get a big fight, Alliance get it the other way. I, I still think Liquid, after conceding those three heroes, they're still in a in a commanding position. But this means that if Alliance managed to do it again, and as you say, if Loda is there, then they're probably going to be able to claim the tower, and then they're going to start being able to take over the map bit by bit. When Shadowfiend goes for Midas like this, it's it's a non-value item right now. It's going to pay itself back in Radiance time, but I feel like Koik for going for Midas against this Alliance lineup is really greedy when you think about it, because he oh, doesn't yeah. want to be weak when Alliance tries to push these towers, but for now it's worked out for him because Liquid just played such a good early game with their rotating supports that he can't afford it. But this... This could end up backfiring really hard if Alliance hit another good fight within the next few minutes. Then Koifu, what can he contribute? He doesn't have anything yet. He's kind of dependent on his yeah, team to make the moves so far. It's definitely a risk, and I'm not sure if it was warranted, but he did it anyway. I mean, he is two levels higher than everyone in the game, so he has that going for him. And of course, the Midas is just going to contribute towards that factor, going to snowball that. But yeah, you're right. He needs he needs an eye. He needs a BKB badly. I'm not Bulldog. sure if he does, does that first or not. Mid lane, Bulba, getting dragged. Is this gonna be enough damage? Yes, indeed it is. So Alliance. EGM has that blink dagger. Out of nowhere, I he I know he's been jungling with sandstorm. I saw him getting level seven. That's a 12 minute blink dagger still on a support sand king. This typical EGM just finds the farm in. Incoming. Seemingly out of nowhere. TC. Oh, missed hook shot from Admiral Bulldog, but he's still down here. Are they gonna be able to get? The cogs or battery assault? No! Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. A little late on the cogs, but they're going to be happy with the tier one at the very least. Yeah. Dragon Knight somehow catching up in levels all of a sudden with with the Shadow Radiant's Fiend. bottom tower has. It's fallen. weird to say catching up because he solo killed the Shadow Fiend in the start. That's just you know. Then That's true. After you solo kill your mid lane opponent, you've pretty much just won the lane, and you should be snowballing. But Koikva found so much farm, went for the Midas, and because of that, of course, he has the golden experience advantage right now, combined with the fact that he has 110 CS at Dyer's 13 minutes, which is, is pretty much attack. almost as good as it gets, especially considering he died once. So this is I very think we should keep impressive. one thing in mind here, and it's not like this is a bad pickup, but I just have to note that getting. A BKB this early, as we might have a gank attempt on S4, who is in a lot of trouble. Gonna take a frostbite with the Nova first, actually. Poison touch to follow. Doesn't yes. pop anything. He's, he knows he's dead. But what I want to talk about, getting a BKB this early, the later the game goes, the faster Dyer's that is gonna, going is to attack. lose its effect. I mean, it's going to end up being a four second BKB before you know it, especially with Alliance's lineup in general just being so aggressive. So just look out for that. By picking up the early think. BKB, I don't know. I mean, it's a good choice. I'm not saying it's like a bad choice. It's just... I still think it's the mind. choice, Let's to be honest. Not. I know what you all oh, want. Oh, deny by Lord. We, I see, it seems like every series in this tournament so far, we get an epic deny every game. Like, one <laughs> against true. three or one against four. I think we've had it in every series. And Loda making the big play there. I would say... BKB is still the choice. When you look at Alliance's lineup, there's no denying it. You bypass the Nether Ward. You bypass everything about... Pretty much every hero in Alliance is actually terrible when the enemy team is Maddie Immunity, so this is the choice to make for Koiko, but right, when you get it early and you start taking the fights, it, of course, loses efficiency over time, but I don't think Koiko is going to care about that. If he gets two or three kills every time he uses it, then he could just buy a new one if he's worried about the duration well, later yeah, on. That's going to be a huge thing to keep in mind as well. So It's really going to pay off here. Loda going to be going for a Necro Book. guess we shouldn't be surprised with that, considering their, the name of the game is Push or Alliance. Despite not having as many towers as I think they would want to. Pugna, though. Oh, Loda's in trouble. Yeah. 
What? Okay, what? Fluff's just gonna oh. TP out right in his face. And shadow okay. Venus they saw the haste of Dragon Knight. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. Yeah, they have a ward good there and they immediately get out. Good call. They I didn't see the Dragon Knight coming, so I was like, that was the weirdest initiate I've ever seen. Hey, Loda. <laughs> Walks in, ready to shadow to use his poison touch, and then just teepees out. I was wondering if he misclicked and wanted to use an item like an urn Radiant's or something. Radiant's top tower it's... is under attack. Ooh, got the hell Mid lane. Out of there. Yep. Admiral Bulldog's thinking about it. Thinking about that hook shot. Well, EGM is in a great position. He's going to go for it. EGM ult. He's going to go directly on Koifa and the hook shot. But there's the grave. Wrecking of Souls almost used, but he's going to cancel at the last second way too. Looks like he's going to go down the Dragon Knight, but Shadow Fiend does fall along with Bulldog. That's a two for Skywrath Mage to follow. It is a two for two exchange at this point. Looks like no further kill. Come on, though. Liquid looking for more. There comes the Dream Coil. What uses this fight? Because he wasn't even here, but Bulba getting bursted down like none other. So three for two in favor of Alliance. Getting a really good initiation, but it was a good recovery from Liquid. Yeah, the Shallow Grave really saved everything there. If that wasn't, wasn't on Shadow Fiend at the right time there, that fight would have been a total disaster. And the reason Koiko cancels his Requiem is that he has a Clockwork standing next to him using the Battery Assault. So there's no way in hell he's ever going to get it off. And doing the right thing by trying to run does get picked off in the end. I just have to say, EGM in this game for me has been absolutely phenomenal. He has made not a, single bad, mis not a single bad decision. And you're right, the entire series for me so far, he's definitely the MVP. He's Dazzle! Absolutely amazing performance from him so far. Absolutely. Top lane, way too, way too. Better be careful. Yeah, he could be in trouble Blink here. Blink dagger, he goes, EGM. He goes forward. Available to dive. Question is, do they want to commit? Not looking like that's going to be the case. Radiant's and it's probably the right choice now that Bulba attack. is here. Although Dream Coil is down, so Dyer's perhaps they give you pick up two if they want it. But attack. anyway, not going to happen. Koika, looking in a jungle. He's going to get hook shot. Nice vision Dyer's from Admiral Dyer's Bulldog. Dyer's and Alliance, and that is going to be an easy, easy kill. And again, he's being punished for getting that Midas. He doesn't have much tank ability. He has the Ogre Club. But yeah, if he no didn't BKB get the yet. Midas, he would have had the BKB in this in the last fight Top and lane. in that gank. A late initiation on Way2, who's way out of position, and will fall way as well. Way too far up. <laughs> That's been overplayed. Come on. Come on, Sidney. No, you used it once, I used it once. Come on, it's a fair deal. Okay. I right. get to use your Radiant bad deal. I used it like times. <laughs> But then anyway, I can definitely use it once. Okay. Alliance going to be the top tier one. Lotus defending the bottom lane. This looking a little bit. I'm trying to find out what these graphs resemble. It's um. Let's see. Radiance top tower is under attack. Uh, it's radiant structure. It's like a really. Mm, I was gonna say breasts that are really deformed. Radiance top I have tower very dirty is mines, under attack. So. Yeah. Actually, I could say it's my breasts. <laughs> How am I supposed to take over from that? <laughs> I know, you're going to be too turned on to be able to even cast at this point. Yeah, I, I don't blame I, you. I can't. I, I, I don't know what to do about myself. I'm really trying to focus on the game right now, but I can't think of anything else than <laughs> you naked for some reason. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh my goodness, Sinan. Oh, it's getting hot in here while Lotus pushing bottom. What are we going to do, Suns fan? He has a level... Oh, it's a level 1 right now, but he has level 2 in his stash. Top lane, though. Burrow Strike, along with the epicenter. Nice grave. Is this going to keep him long? Just two TPs to follow. Koika, not able to reinitiate back in, though. Poison Touch looking to be used, Radiance but bottom tower doesn't have any actual attack. backups. I'm not sure. Bottom lane, though. And this is exactly where Alliance punishes you. You're not able to really... You're not able to get the kill on Shadow Fiend, but at the same time... This bottom lane is taking a ton of damage. Oh, hook, shot. hook shot on the way to, and there's combination again. Okay, goodbye, wow. way to. And he even has a haste rune, so he's gonna get out of here. I think. Oh, that's a dream call. Dream Never mind that. He's probably falling. And in the end, not really worth the trade for a lowly crystal no. maid. But again, top tier two. Yeah, bottom tier two and top tier one. Although I'm not sure they'll wow. be able to clean yeah, this top up. Top tier two as well, actually. I think S4 is gonna finish this. He can BKB TP out, and S4, uh, sorry, EGM can blink if he wants. Oh my God, so greedy trying to get the last hit. Just get it already. But yeah, he's gonna do just that, and we'll get out, no problem. That was a 10 second BKB for that, though. It's really interesting to see, though. It's like, in the last game, I was praising Alliance so much for their execution and early game decision making, and the mid game as well. And this game, it was like Liquid did an as good early game as Alliance did in the last one, and now Alliance has just found their stride that they had in the last game. The last 10 minutes for Alliance, I almost can't put a finger on anything they've done. It's been so well done, everything on the map. That split push they just executed there out of nowhere, Sure, they, they, like you said, they sacrificed the clockwork for a kill and two tier two towers? They, this was looking like Liquid's game ten minutes ago, and now Alliance has just... Yeah. Like, this, this graph... 
I, I can't even justify calling it a, ba a bad play from Liquid. I just think Alliance no, has been phenomenal. Well, I don't want people to confuse it. I mean, I don't think they've been playing poorly. It's just more Alliance just playing out of their minds right now. And they're taking their lineup to their advantage. They're getting Necros, and I believe even Sank King is almost done with his Necro. So that is just double Necro book. Which used to be, I remember in Dota One that used to be the limit is two Necro books. It yeah, wasn't, it wasn't true. like a built into the game. It was just like you can't buy more than two Necro books. Yeah, this part of the rule I remember set. those days. There was actually Either a time way, when you can only have one mechanism as well because they stacked when you used them as well. Oh, uh, I don't remember that. That's only awesome. one refresher or per team for no reason. I don't know. <laughs> refresher, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, TC's gonna nice plasma Dyer's field here. I think Alliance is still gonna get so as well. Damage. He's gonna pop it. Looks like Aegis is gonna be picked up by Alliance though. Here comes the Sand King ulti along with Koika. Trying to do as much damage as he can, but just not gonna be enough, it looks like. Although Alliance is very low. Nice shallow grave. Gonna keep Koika alive for now and a grave frostbite. But there's the hook shot. There's a double kill for Admiral. Hold on, make that triple. I believe that was a double hook shot kill, if I'm not mistaken. Because it has a small AoE. Oh, that was disgusting. Okay. Disgusting is once, a, once again. I'm allowed to say it. That was disgusting. I'm out of words you for sound this series. Speechless, I'm Cinder. really out of words for this. These plays by Alliance. I just, I'm just really enjoying watching this game to the fullest. I'm gonna come off like the hugest fanboy now, but seriously, this, I, I can't really fault them for attack. anything they're doing apart from their early game. The only thing I really want to come back to for Team Liquid that they've made as a crucial mistake is still that BKB getting picked up so late by Koikva. I think the Midas here. Radiant has Middle cost them, Tower but it's hard to fallen. say whether or not having the BKB earlier would have made a significant difference. But I think Alliance has just seized the opportunity they got, and they've just made so much out of it. Getting the Roshan there as well, that wasn't a bad initiation from Liquid either. They got a very nice decision from uh, TC to move in like he did when he did. Karko got a full Requiem off, and it still wasn't enough. So what can they hope for at this point? Alliance are racking up these huge items. Loda, who was completely sacked, now has a 20-minute Necro 3. Look at the graphs right now. Yeah, like when we were talking originally, it was downward sloping, but this is a cliff, you know? This is just plummeting. It's, it's actually the fiscal cliff right there. Yeah. That yeah. is the U.S. economy right there, in a <laughs> nutshell. U.S. economy. This graph is illustrating Obamacare. <laughs> oh, peace. Oh, boy. How dare you, by the way. How dare you. But... Dyer's structures yeah, I really should. We love healthcare. Tier 1. Everybody has, yeah, it says universally. Oh, here we go, Bulldog. Bulldog. Another initiation. Way too's gonna live. Shallow Grave was used on Crystal Maiden, though. Is that gonna be a mistake? Dream Core the follow. TC is dead. Popping the BKB. Is he dead? Maybe. 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 How is he getting he out of this line? I have absolutely no idea. Hookshot, though. It's gonna hit. Oh, that's a rocket. Really want to kill TC, though. Rocket. It's not sure that's gonna be enough damage, though. Rocket. Not gonna hit. Somehow he got out. I thought it was gonna be a big mistake on the grave, but turns out to be. Fine, his dad was the only casualty. <laughs> really just wanting to stun the crap out of Puck for some reason. Really hates Radiant that wench. Middle tower is under Show attack. him his bossy gym right there. But while this is happening, just keep in mind, Shadowfiend not feeling comfortable enough to be in team fights apparently. Radiant structures this bottom are lane. fortified. Right. The bottom going to get shaded way too. Oh, oh, way too is going to go down to the, the drain the from Loda and Bulba will follow suit. The ancient seal silence is just way too much for him to handle. Shadowfiend is here though, wasn't able to take down that tier 1 tower. But you're right, I mean the BKB, like, I, I was obviously talking about if this went into late game, the effects that the BKB hey, okay. buying it early would have, but... Uh, didn't get it early enough in this particular game. I mean if he hadn't gotten the Midas, what would he have gotten after the BKB that would help him team fight right now? I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure where to go for Liquid for... <laughs> what's, what's Bulldog doing? He's showing I'm he's looking at these Fluff. Hook shots for no Fluff reason. is like but... doing a chant dance here. Uh, stopped. He got shy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start using that Obama Obamacare term better, oh, better yeah. than I did just then, because it should that should be when it's completely even, right? That's when the graphs aren't changing. That's when it's in zero. The Obamacare graph. Well. I don't know, I'm trying to make a point out of it because that was a stupid comment and I can't find any no, it, reasoning. Actually, it made more sense when you said it originally, to be honest. But of oh, course, it it'll... The problem is I was insulting my own ideology because I think it's a great idea, so... I came across well, the wrong think... way. Let's talk about politics the rest yeah, of the match. Yeah, we, we should that? totally do that. So what do you Dyer's think... BGM's gonna deny this God's Alliance's denied. idea of applying mass labor for the use of Necronomicons as their conscripts of battle. But they enjoy slave labor. Really, I mean, yeah, they're not even I mean, what they're the doing, Loda is the slave in this scenario because he's been dying. 
Oh, Bulldog. Every Bulldog. single fight. He's gonna find a hit here. Directly and on Bulldog the way to. Oh He's actually gonna goodness. abandon him. Dyer's Look at this damage. Oh, nice. Attack. Nice grave at the last second. But four set from Aki. Very nice. Gonna keep Bulba alive and Aki will probably- Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Double kill for Loda. Oh, that ward. That ward is so sick. As Crystal Maiden apparently dies. I didn't say it. I did not say it. You wanted to. I did. I guess that's something we haven't really mentioned. I mean, the ward obviously is probably the biggest team fight contributor for Pugna. Uh, honestly, I would say the biggest team fight for Team fight contributor, period. I would put it over Sand King. Although the initiation from Clockwork is actually, I would put that higher. Radiance Either way, it's something that cannot be overlooked. As he still has an Aegis, so this Rax in all likelihood will be going down. Nether Blast coming up. And in fact, he has Aghanim Scepter almost finished at base. Just gonna be harassing down. Watch for the. Blast to continue to come out. There comes the initiation from EGM. Grave on Koifka, gonna keep him alive for now, but are the Cogs gonna come out to ensure the kill? It looks like that might be the case. Koifka is still alive, but will finally pop. And Loda, who finally used the Aegis, they're gonna clean up this rack, but is it gonna cost Loda his life? He's gonna take some damn. Oh, Necro. <laughs> gonna try to stay alive, but it's really gonna prevent the inevitable. Oh my god, Bulldog. Just going balls deep. S4, look at. Damage from Alliance! Good lord, woman! Almost said disgusting him, but I didn't say it. <laughs> oh my god! I'm... Oh, and another hook it... shot. Oh my god. <laughs> Bulldog has been on point oh, as well, I'm not gonna lie. Scepter. He's landed some amazing Absolutely. hook shots in this game so far. But he far. can only play two heroes, Cinder. Come on. Oh, really? I think yeah. he can play a lot of heroes. What heroes has he played so far in this tournament? I think he's played well, like I, I was being, five or six. I was being facetious. God. I know you okay. were. But people are gonna think you're just okay, being an ass. Oh no. Which is actually kind of true as well some of the time, but yeah. it's okay. We get along. Everybody thinks I'm such a jerk. I'm such yeah. a sweetheart though, you know? Such a cutie. Well, Alliance majorly yeah. ahead Major right fight now. there. Even though they lose load in the end, they got what they came for. It's um... It's, it's spiraling out of control. There's no other way to put it. This slope is just continuing down, down, down for, for Alliance here and... This is the Great Depression graph that I'm looking it really, at. <laughs> we should stop doing that now. Okay, you get one use because <laughs> okay. I did that's, a bad that's joke from, as well. No, that's from the 20s, so it, nobody cares about that anymore. It's not like... Nobody's sore about it. Hashtag US economics. Absolutely. Loda picks up his Aghanim Scepter. What do you think about that? I mean, it makes him tankier, and his life drain has absolutely no cooldown. Um, it's a very common pick. It doesn't really matter at this point, I guess. A very common pickup and gives it a lot of well, great I would stats. I think mech would be first before that, though. I'm surprised they didn't get a mech as well. I would agree with that, though, because they have so much farm in all their heroes, and I think definitely one of them should be getting a mech. Oh, Here we go, TC. S4 pops his BKB. There comes the hookshot and the grave, as you can expect, coming out. But TC, I would be shocked if he gets out of this this time. It's Quokka, Quokka. I can't even pronounce his name in this team fight. He gets off his ultimate. <laughs> Able to get one kill. Dragonite falls. This is surprising as Alliance is going down. That's a two but there goes Koika, and that is their main damage source. So Liquid might have to back out here. Razor, how much damage is this? Not much damage to speak of. As Loda, almost able to get the kill thanks to his, his ultimate, but gets silenced at the last second. Can't get that off that one either. So a three for two exchange. Very well played by TC in this. I was I was surprised he even chose to use the BKB. He had like a hundred health, got saved by the shallow grave. He, lived. he used That's the BKB. Insane. He used his wand and realized that he could simply just run Incoming. out of it. He stayed alive the whole fight. He dealt so much damage, and he had nothing to fight with basically apart from his abilities. So very well done here by TC. I think the requiem from Koiko was amazing as well. And surprisingly Koika. enough, Liquid Koika. are staying alive Indian's here. Bottom tower is under attack. Why, why do I have trouble with that name in team fights? Koika. Koif, Koif, Koifka. Koifka. No. Koif, there's an F. Koika. Koifka. Koik. Koik. I'm just gonna call him Shadow Fiend. Right. right. We're gonna. You're, you're gonna need some coaching on that. <laughs> hey, at least I can almost say Chabost. No, that's that's good. That makes it even I worse forward, that you can't I say something forward. as simple as quite good. <laughs> well, I could say it before this game, but apparently I've had a stroke after all this politics talk. So I can just blame it on you. Just a round blanketing statement there. Yeah, oh, Razor, fault. I didn't oh, even no. realize how the that's Aghanim always... Scepter. But they're not really trying to push. If he can get okay, if he can get a refresher, then this would be awesome to watch. Absolutely. Awesome. They, I, I, we didn't even mention with that. 
plus the Shadow Fiend Aura and Dazzle Ultimate. That is a lot of minus armor. I don't know how we didn't mention that one time. It's too bad they're That's not true. on Dire. Yeah, they could actually have the opportunity. They could have the opportunity to come back here if they could get Roche. And they were Dire. <laughs> but unfortunately, it looks like Alliance is going to do just that. This one is going to be absolutely impossible. If Liquid go and try to contest this, they're going to lose the game, I think. They can't get in here. The fight in the jungle was so good for them because Alliance initiated onto Liquid and they were in a very good position for them to get off their abilities correctly in this clutch area with Shadow Pink getting in. And, of course, with TC getting the Shallow Grave like he needs. But if they try to go into the Roche Pit, they're going to get completely initiated on outside the, the pit. And actually, speaking oh. of which... I don't know if they can get him though. Oh, the Burrow oh Strike to follow. Goodness. Great initiation Cold and the Ancient Seal the to secure the kill. Wow, that layering of stuns and silences was perfect. Absolutely perfect. A bulldog, yeah, bulldog is, is hitting completely these dumbfounded. Dumbfounded. He's really hitting them left, right, and center. He's missed very few of them and they were irrelevant. It, it's, it's incredible what he's pulling off so far. And I guess when we say so far, it's basically all likelihood approaching what could be the end of the game right now as Alliance are going to try to push the base. They do have a Necronomicon 3 on cooldown for Loda, unfortunately for them, so can't really go for it right now with that, but still, oh, wow. he has the Aegis. popped his ult so early. S4 in dragon form, perhaps, probably going to pop his BKB here. TC stealing as much damage as possible, stealing a decent amount. Finally, S4 pops the BKB. Of course, that doesn't stop Static Link in that case. Loda, oh my god, almost solos Crystal Maiden with just his ultimate. Speaking of ultimates, Epicenter, nice! Grave is gonna keep Bulb alive for now. Shadow Fiend ult coming out. Nobody dead for Alliance. Make that one in Skyrath Mansion. Another amazing hookshot and cog combination for Bulldog as he has been the MVP in these fights for sure. Alliance really low, but only one alive for Liquid. So this, in all likelihood, is a dead tier 3 tower. If not GG, perhaps. They could, if there's no buybacks here. Yeah, GG. Yeah, and the GG's Radiance come out for TC. I think this well. game is, yeah, this game is completely over. The chance of coming back here is, is almost nil, so... Alliance, Radiance. really... Alliance, victory! It's, it's been the same Alliance we saw against Fnatic, I feel. First game is a little bit shaky, and then game two and three, they're just playing out of their minds. And once again, I want to say, apart from that decision we talked about with Shadowfin's BKB, I still feel like you saw in every one of those fights, Liquid, they get up these low graves from Fluff. They got an amazing freezing field in the early game. Uh, Razor's doing a great job in these fights. Puck is getting his spells off the way he can. is really hard against Pugna, mind you, and Skyrath. Playing Puck in this game is very difficult. And still, Alliance just overpowered them completely. It's, um... It's beautiful to watch this kind of Dota. And, uh... I have to say, if Liquid continue playing, the good, especially they had some really good moves in games 1 and 2. I feel like in this game 3, they didn't have as much to bring as in the other games when we got a little further. But I feel like they definitely have a good shot at reaching the playoffs with how they play today. Absolutely. But Alliance taking the 2-1 victory. That's 2-1 in both their series. And of course, as Cinderin mentioned in the beginning of our cast, the round-robin point system is actually different than most tournaments because if you go 2-0, and oh, you actually get more points than going 2-for-1. So as a result, Na'Vi was in the lead, but of course, since they've only played one match, Alliance is now technically in the lead with, uh, I believe, four points at this point. Uh, anyway, that is our day of casting. Uh, after we're after, we're going to have a commercial break here coming up soon, but after that, we're going to be choosing our winners of the Logitech giveaway, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Aside from that, this was Sunspan and Cinderin of Dota Cinema Casting. Um, keep in mind that the rebroadcast will be coming up right after this and if you want VODs they will be at dotacinema.com because our VODs in fact I'm going to be making a video soon to show you guys how to use the VODs